The family of a local teenager says she never would have left home without calling. It's praying for the best. I want my daughter home, man. And then she can't come home. I just want to know where she's at. These posters around the towns of Livermore and Jay beg anyone with information to come forward. Posters that Richard puts up every spring, never losing hope. Tell me what happened to my daughter. Just just look me in the eyes so I can see her. An arrest in a nearly four-decade-old cold case thanks to cutting-edge DNA technology. The arrest happening exactly 39 years to the day. When Parabon Nanolabs used that sample to create 3D models of the suspected killer's face. It's heartbreaking. We miss her and we're going to find her. We're going to keep looking until we do. It's like a never-ending nightmare. It doesn't end. It keeps returning and it coming back. What if I told you a toddler is put to bed in her dad's home in Waterville, Maine, the night of December 16th, 2011, and is never seen again? What if I said so much evidence and blood is found at the home that police unequivocally say she has not been abducted, but rather a victim of foul play? What if I told you it's been eight years, eight years of heartbreak, eight years of mourning, eight years without Ayla, and not one person has been charged in her disappearance? Tonight we are speaking with Donna, who has been following the case very closely since day one. She also runs a Facebook page called Speak Up for Ayla. Hello, Donna. Hello. Hey, Donna. How are you? It's Travis. Hi, Travis. How are you? Good. I'm here with Jeff. How are you? Hello. Hi, Jeff. (laughs) All right. So I guess, first of all, what got you interested in Ayla's case? Well, let's see. Ayla was here in Waterville, Maine. I did not live here at the time, but I was raised here. And a friend contacted me who is from the area. She contacted me the next day to let me know about what happened to Ayla Reynolds. And I just became very interested in her story because I knew some of the people involved. Um, I knew of some of the people involved. And it just really hit home because it was just a child, a child who had disappeared from my hometown. And it's like, what in the world is going on? Right. That's how I got interested. Now, currently you have a Facebook page. What's the name of that page? I have a Facebook page and I started it several years ago. It's called Speak Up for Ayla. And my intention was to allow anyone to say whatever they felt they needed to say regarding anyone, regarding Ayla Bell's disappearance. Um, and that's what's been happening so far. It's been pretty good. We ha- we don't get a lot of people talking because there's not a lot of information out. Right. But I think it's given some people the opportunity to be able to say what they feel they need to say. Now, what kind of feedback have you gotten on that page? Uh, it's not been too positive as far as the DePetros go. Um, I don't know. I don't know why people feel that way, but they just have their own opinions, and I just let them say it. It's just not a very positive outcome for Justin DiPietro and his family. Have you ever been contacted by any of her relatives? I have not, no. I've not been contacted at all by any of her relatives. I have only been contacted one time by someone claiming to have Ayla Reynolds. Oh, geez. Can you tell us that story? Sure. Um, Two summers ago, yes, it was two summers ago, uh, a person on Facebook contacted me and said that they had Ayla Reynolds and that I was to contact her family and give them some some pertinent information. And um, I said to them, I don't know who you are, but what I would suggest you do is to call 911. Actually, I gave them the Maine State Police phone number and told them to call that number. And when I finished talking to them, I I made copies of everything that was sent to me, and I contacted Maine State Police myself. In the interim, these people contacted me again and demanded that I... I have to speak to her family. I need to give them this phone number. I know it's an international phone number. So the mm. police finally, the state police finally got in touch with me, and I talked to 
them about it and gave them all the information. My Facebook um, in the mess messages went kind of haywire for a day or so. And then everything straightened out, and I never heard another word. Well, the police said to me it was probably some type of scam. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Send us, send, have the family send us some money, and we'll put it on a yeah, payment some, center some home. Yeah, some fake ransom. Were they, were they able to determine where the call originated from? I never heard from them again. I never heard from Maine State Police again. So, so uh, could you possibly, from from your recollection, um, kind of give us a, a rundown of uh, what happened the night that, that Ayla disappeared? Um, or leading up to that even? From my recollection, from everything that I heard, and from everything that I read, mm -hmm. um, let's see. Ayla was in the care of her aunt and her grandmother, Trista Reynolds' sister and mother, for a time while she was going through some important work she needed to do for herself. She was, she was going to detox and rehab for a few days. And from what I understand is Justin got wind of this, or Phoebe got wind of this, and wanted to have the child Ayla brought to the Waterville home where Phoebe lived. On, I think it was October 17th, Phoebe DiPietro contacted a DHHS worker named Karen Small. Karen Small told them, told Phoebe that she needed to hear from Justin directly. Well, she never got to hear from Justin directly. So Phoebe said, I'm on my way to get the child and I want the phone number. Well, somehow she managed to get Jessica's phone number to Jessica's apartment. And she called called the police and said the police to, to ask the police to come and help them to get Ayla. So that's how Ayla ended up living in Waterville. She moved there. She moved in there October 17th. I don't think anything was done legal for her to be there. I've heard stories that Tristan wanted Ayla to go there. But the, the biggest thing that sticks out is that she was there and it wasn't a legal transpiring that happened. So, so um, let me ask you this. Yeah. Now, I've read yes. before, I'm not sure how true this is. Is Phoebe and Karen, are they relatives of some sort? I have heard that they're cousins. I do not know this for a fact. I've never seen any proof of that. But yes, I have also heard that their relatives and that's why she was able to get what she wanted from her so what makes it a legal uh, transaction I guess we'll call it well the legal transaction part is Trista allowed and asked for her mother and her sister to take care of Ayla while she was in rehab um, Justin and Phoebe just came in and took the child away and she didn't have he didn't have any paperwork saying he could do that yes i know he was legally ayla's father but he couldn't just remove her from a place that trista said she needed to be now typically in that situation i think doesn't dhs aren't they supposed to go into the home to verify that it's a safe environment for the child to be moved into like typically absolutely they, they do that right yes and nothing was done nothing like that was done I also read where the officer that joined them to, to pick her up that day, um, Jessica, Trista's sister, said, you know, watch Ayla's reaction when she sees her father. And, and Ayla, when, upon seeing her father, she just kind of broke out in tears and ran away from him. And the officer actually had to help get Ayla into her father's hands, I believe. Yes, I, I've heard that as well. Um, not a good, not a good place for an officer to have to be, or for that little child to have to be afraid of your own father. Mm. I, I wonder what that officer, how he feels, you know, to this day. Yeah. So she uh, goes to their home, and this is what day? Yes. This was October seventeenth in twenty eleven. Yeah, twenty eleven. Right. Um, what? What was life like at the DePetro home after that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I can give you my guesses. I don't know how they lived. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I don't have a clue. I think, you know, there was partying going on. I think there was drinking going on. From what I understand, where Justin moved in into the basement at his mom's home, there were a lot of beer cans and, and other uh, things around that probably shouldn't be there with children in the house. I mean, beer cans is one thing, but this, I, I understand, was really trashed. Um, there were holes in the wall in the in the living room upstairs where people had gotten angry and punched their their fists through walls. That's mm. now these are all stories, um, and there were um, things there that probably shouldn't have been there for children to be around. I think, from what I understand, Ayla um, had suffered a few injuries while living in Phoebe DiPietro's home. She had a bruised leg that she was checked out for but the biggest injury was a fracture of her arm and Justin said that he slipped on top of Ayla while carrying a bag of groceries up the stairs um, and I don't know if that's true or if that's not true he said it was the stairs were slippery right he, and I don't he stated yeah. the, the stairs were slippery and wet right okay and then I believe there's an incident he claims took place at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my gosh, yes. I forgot all about that, Travis. Uh-huh. He said there was um, that she had gotten hit by some kids in the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese in South Portland, but there wasn't a Chuck E. Cheese there. Apparently it didn't exist, or it did exist, and there was nope. no ball pit. Yeah, yeah. So Chuck E. Cheese is there, but they don't even have a ball pit. So his story exactly. about okay. a fight happening in the ball pit not be true. Right could not be could not be true is not true she got hit somehow and uh, it wasn't from another kid I'm sure um, she missed a couple of doctor's appointments that she was supposed to go to um, while she her was mom, in the care of Justin still while she was in the care of Justin her mother contacted Justin to uh, this again this is hearsay and what Trista has reported to the news herself she contacted Justin to see if she could see Ayla. One time she was told that Ayla was busy. She's watching the movie Home Alone. Um, and I understand another time was when she was going to go to East Millinocket to visit someone and she wanted to take Ayla with her. And that was actually on the 15th of December. That was on a Friday. She supposedly contacted Justin to let him know that she was going to visit someone and she wanted to take Ayla with her and he told her flat out no, she wasn't going. So that was the day she filed her rights and responsibilities, I believe, in Lewiston so she could get sole custody of Ayla. Um, now let's go back to, I read that he actually um, bought life insurance or put life right? insurance on her. He bought life insurance on her uh, several weeks before she disappeared. That's from, all I know about that. And, from, and he from bought a it buddy from, of his, right? Yes, yes, he did buy it from a buddy. I don't know if you want me to say names, but the person's name, you can edit it out if you it's don't want Derek it, Tudela. is Derek Tudela. <laughs> yep. And um, he was a friend of his from wa the Waterville area. They used to be paper boys together in the same section of where Justin lived and where Derek lived as a child. So I find that weird that uh, Justin didn't have a job at the time. Mm -hmm. He has other children. He has no life insurance policy on them. Yet two weeks before she right. goes missing, he takes out a life insurance policy on her. Yeah, I think it's always kind of suspect in the first place, like to put in life insurance on the child, unless it's like you know a, a family life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Like right. just specific, did he have it for himself? Does anyone know? No, he didn't. So he just no, had a poor child and, and no one else. Correct. The one person That's correct. That, that goes missing. And he had another child, but he just took it out on Ayla. Just took out a policy on Ayla. Not on the other one. So uh, he he said that she went missing on December 17th. That's when he called authorities. And that was what, Friday morning? Yes. Yep. That was Saturday morning. Oh, Saturday morning. I'm sorry. So, yes, that's okay. Um, yeah, December 17th. He called 911 to report Ayla was missing. So it was my understanding that Trista tried to call her 
or she, I guess she talked to her on the Thursday the week before and then uh, and I believe that was the night that he said that she was too busy watching Home Alone and then Monday morning he missed an appointment for her for the doctors that's right that would be the right time right timing from what I understand she wanted to talk to her daughter um, he told her she couldn't that she was busy watching the movie and then there was an appointment the next day and he missed that appointment with her and that's the last I know that Tristan actually talked to Ayla was wait when when did she talk to her last it was like in was, November sometimes yeah I don't have the day here in front of me but I, I believe it's like the Wednesday the week before uh, he reported her missing right. But yep. I think it's interesting because he also, you know, he spoke about her supposedly being in the area that morning, the morning of the 17th, which she hasn't denied. Right. Yeah, she was in the area um, of that morning. I spoke to someone who told me that um, her ex-husband actually was giving Trista a ride to visit someone in East Millinocket on that morning. So, I know that's a fact. But I think it's Machias Port, and that was oh yes, to visit, yes it is <laughs> to visit her boyfriend right. Ray. <laughs> that's that's right. Her boyfriend at the time. She's on her way to see Ray. So it yep. seems very strange timing that she's passing through the same morning that Ayla's missing. Um, you know, she has to drive right by the. It is strange timing. Right through Waterville on ninety five, which I used to live actually right next to or right near the DePetro home. I know how close that is to 95. It's within three minutes. Um, it is bizarre timing, but I also wonder yes. if he knew that she was in the area, and that's why he decided he better report her missing. That's all speculative. Yeah. I don't know. You know, no, no, there was that. When was the last time confirmed that anyone else would have seen or heard from Ayla besides the three in the home that what night? I, well, exactly. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying because the three in the home, uh, excluding Heidi Tudela had. Right. Heidi Tudela had said, quote unquote, there were plenty of people who saw Ayla the week she disappeared, the week before she disappeared. Mm -hmm. Now, that was from Heidi Tudela. You know, one of those quotes people make and, you know, I'm passing that on. But that's the only thing that I know of anyone having really seen her. Derek Tudela said he had a play date with her, with his son and Justin and Ayla on Thursday. Um, that would have been the fifteenth of December. Did they and what say, did that really happen? Was I'm it, sorry. Where was this play date supposedly taking place? Play date was supposed to have taken place at Phoebe's at Phoebe De Petro's. Mm -hmm. And that's where Justin lived, correct? Yes, that's where he was staying. Sorry, I, I feel like I got a sidetracked here. <laughs> <laughs> Back up. <laughs> well, the whole story is just bizarre that she's in the area. Um, yeah makes you think so let's let's go back to um december 17th that morning okay what ha what took place that morning how did this transpire that you're aware of from what i from what i re recall the first one up that morning was alicia alicia is justin's younger sister she got up and she was doing her morning thing and she went into see if the kids were awake yet or if Ayla was awake yet because I understand that her own daughter slept with her in her mother's room. Um, the stories get changed around a little bit here and there. Uh, she discovered that Ayla wasn't in, in her bed so she went downstairs to let Justin know that Ayla wasn't there and wanted to know if Ayla was downstairs with him and she wasn't. So Justin came upstairs, he looked all around for Ayla, couldn't find her, didn't know what to do, so they opted to call the police, he called 911. He calls 911, um, his phone dies. He calls 911 again, he gets disconnected. He call, uh, They called him back and he went into, now I could have some of these events like mixed up a little bit, but this is this is what I recall. He went into the oh. bathroom the, and locked himself in the bathroom because he didn't want to talk to the police. So once they arrived, he locked himself in the bathroom, wouldn't come Correct. out, right? Correct. But nobody knows what he's doing there. Is he having a panic attack? Is he flushing things down the toilet that shouldn't be in the home? 
Oh, yes, yeah, he could have been doing that as well. Yeah, didn't want to be caught with anything other than a missing child. So he calls 911 at 8.51 a.m. on that morning. Yes, yes. So I've also, through research, seen where they reported that his cell phone had pinged heading down to Portland and back that morning earlier. Have you read that? Right. I was aware of that. I was aware that there was noise in the middle of the night. There was a loud banging, clanging, metally sound in the middle of the night. The, I was also aware that there was a gray car outside in the front of his house during the night, and it wasn't Courtney's. Courtney also had a silver grayish car. Um, let's see. What else? Hold on. So that, do, sure. Sorry. Uh, do we know if Courtney's car was in the driveway that morning? Yes, it was. I've seen the pictures. I just, I guess, I didn't know what she was driving. So it's like a, like an old, older model Hyundai. No, not a Hyundai, but I don't know. It was a. Okay. I don't remember the model. I really don't. So does Just never admit that he went to Portland that morning? No, Justin says he did not go to Portland. I don't think he went to Portland. Wait a minute. Hold on. But his his phone pinged. His phone pinged. I don't remember him saying he went to portland but at some point he did say he went to portland to get his mattress am i saying that his mattress for his bed but he was already sleeping in a bed right Mm, i don't know i don't know guys i had and this might be something i've misremembered or misread but i had read that he admitted to going to portland that morning and supposedly he was looking for trista to try to find ayla before he reported her missing thinking that Trista had taken her. Yeah, he never made any phone call to Trista. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I could have heard that. I don't recall. Like you are. I don't recall. So if he made, if he went, if he went to Portland during the night but he, to try to find Trista, but yet he didn't even bother to try to call her, yet he had already heard from her that she was going to be in town that morning, things aren't adding up at all. Right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really make a lot of sense. No. Does not make a lot of sense. So, that's what happened. We had a little girl. She was fine. She was healthy. She stayed with her father for two months, from October 17th to December 17th, and he reports her missing. And nobody ever, ever sees or hears that child again. So, initially... Phoebe had stated she was in the home that night, correct? Correct. That's what she told CNN. Right. And then she backtracked and said, well, no, I wasn't in the home that night. Right. There was no party in the home. There was nothing happening on that day here in this house. But it wasn't day. It was nighttime. And she said uh, she was there. Then she changed her mind. And I'm not even sure why she changed her mind. I guess she remembered at a later date that, uh, oh, yeah, I don't think that was the same day that Ayla was missing. Yeah, because that's something you could easily forget, right? Right, exactly. The date when your niece goes missing. Yeah, this was the the granddaughter, actually, her granddaughter. Mm. Yeah. My mistake. They've, They've made quite a few mistakes, actually, but they have not made any mistakes that have said who has done what to this child. I think that's the issue that they running into this three possible people if they do believe one of them did something to her but who do they charge yep i think you're right they can only charge you they can only charge you once for the same crime right so what is that called double is that double jeopardy yeah i think double jeopardy okay i hear that thrown that term thrown around i'm not (laughs) really sure how how it played, but Travis just explained it to me. So I guess maybe let's talk about the search for now. Um, yeah. What direction okay. they took. And- the first, they they pinned the neighborhood. They went knocking from door to door to see if anyone had seen Ayla. Um, the next I heard was no neighbors had seen or heard anything except for one which was a next door neighbor who has since passed away she had her she's the person who told about the car being in front of the house and hearing the loud clang outside of the house so loud that actually woke her dog up and her dog started barking 
Did uh, have you ever heard any theories of what that noise could have been? No. Other than the water hydrant in the front of the house. Yeah, that's what I heard. The the sewer, the manhole cover. <coughs> is what right. I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Hmm. Um nothing outside of that. Inside the house, they, I mean, not the house, but in the garage, they had found um, an empty, an empty container of, I think it was some type of acid. Um, and there was something else, too. I think it was, I don't know. I'm just putting thoughts. Half a bag of cement, I heard. It was cement. Okay. I wasn't certain of that in my memory. And let's see what else. Um, I, they searched the house. They tore the house apart. They found uh, thing. They found splatters of blood. They found blood with luminol um, that someone had tried to clean up. Yeah, um, they they confirmed that that was Ayla's, right? They did yes. confirm it was Ayla's. Um, Steve McCausland had made a report that there was more blood of Ayla's than what than a small cut would cause. Um, I was told, and this could have just been a police officer just saying something off the cuff, but he told somebody that it was actually more than a cup of blood. Um, this was stated at the Maine State Police. That's a fair amount for a child. That's a large amount for a child. She weighed about 30 pounds, so yeah, that was a lot of blood. Yeah. Um, she also had some kind of pink plastic thingy in her vomit that was on or or on the floor in Justin's room or on his bed. It's like pink, it was, pink fiber or something you mean? Yes, yep. Yeah. Some type of pink but it was a plastic type of fiber. Mm -hmm. Um she had there was her blood upstairs in the living room on the couch, on the lampshade, on her smeared on her doll face, her doll's face. Um there was blood found in Justin DePietro's shoe. Um, there was blood found on a sheet in a blue tote that was in the basement where Justin was sleeping. And then in his car, there was also blood in the back seat on the seatbelt and in Ayla's car seat and some on the floor of the vehicle itself. Jeez, so, and all, all of this, like, even if this was... Uh, minus the whole cup of blood, right? If they just found, like, blood, you know, on this and that and this and that throughout the house and maybe it was over the course of time, it still seems like, why is this Why is this poor kid bleeding so much, right? Yes. There's obviously, it's, to me, it seems like it's pretty obvious that there was something else happening. Uh, right. If it didn't all happen on, on that one night, that why was this kid's blood all throughout the house so much? So, if you uh, ask Alicia... She reported right. Crime Watch Daily. She claimed that um, Ayla had a uh, what? What did she say? Lactose, Lactose intolerance, intolerance problem, right? And it caused her to vomit, and that causes her to smear her blood everywhere, right? <laughs> Doesn't sound very Doesn't plausible to me either. No, 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 that's yeah. not it. You know, and just <sighs> food for thought. You know, they talk about the blood splatter, like. I can only assume by watching CSI and those types of shows that it's from a blunt force object or someone hitting somebody or something like that. But uh, right. I did have an interesting conversation with someone where if if she had or somehow ingest a lethal dose of, say, heroin, that caused you to vomit blood. Oh. Um, if you're a little kid and you're being picked up by someone and they're tapping your back and you're spitting blood out that way because there's saliva mixed with the blood, like that would also cause a blood splatter as well. So that's I think that's what's difficult about this case is you just don't know what the heck happened. Right. Right. There's so many different scenarios that there were there was blood splatter, you're right, on the wall by his bed as well in the basement. And and one of the rumors was that uh one of the other children got a hold of a gun and, and somehow shot her. Which would explain the loud bang too, but I, I can't mm. imagine they're up at three in the morning, but who knows? Well, I, I imagine they probably would have found a, a bullet hole as well if they were tearing the house apart that well. True. Didn't they? Re, re, didn't they remove a piece of the? Uh, yeah, they removed a piece of the basement floor, right? Yeah, they they took a That's, section of of the cement 
Right. Now, was that just for blood splatter, or was it for something else? We oh, don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah, because it's still an open case, so mm-hmm. like it's really hard to ask too many questions without getting shut down. So she's reporting. She's reported missing on December seventeenth. By December twenty sixth, uh, Waterville Police Chief Joseph Massey tells reporters that investigators had ruled out the possibility that Ayla Reynolds had been abducted. Correct. So within nine days, which they probably had that figured out within three days. Yeah, or, and they just putting piecing it together, confirming their own story. That mm. yeah, for sure, this is what happened, or most likely, this is what happened. Right. She was not abducted. She didn't walk out of that house on her own two feet, is what McCausland actually said. Um, they checked the rivers. They checked the Messalonsky River. They checked a small body of water, which was on First Range. Is it First Range, right? Yes, yep, it is yep. First Range, right? Um, which is right opposite um, Violet Avenue. I was actually driving through there when they were pumping that out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they checked behind the Hathaway um, for remains. They actually emptied that and they checked the sluice to see if there were was anything that could have anything to do with Ayla. They found a blanket and a little bag. I do not know and do not think it had anything to do with Ayla. Um, only from different things I've read. I don't have any proof that it did or didn't. Let's put it that way. And, and they, they didn't claim it did at all either. Right. They also searched um, a field in Oakland because they had received a tip. So they went and searched a field out in Oakland and they found nothing but animal bones. They, they walked the whole trail of the Meslonsky stream trail. They did not find any evidence of Ayla, but they did find another man whose um, skeletal remains were there who had been missing for years in the area. Mm -hmm. I believe his name was Steve Brandon. Um, But nothing again to do with Ayla. So they just don't know where she is. They do not know where Ayla Bell is. It's just... And and this was uh, the largest and most expensive search they've ever done in Maine history, too. Like There's a lot of manpower and man hours put into this. Yes. And yes. the only thing they could find was at that house. There was nothing beyond it. Yeah, it's almost like she never left that house. Right. That's just a feeling, you know, like where did she go? How did she just disappear into thin air? Right. You know, what did they do with this child? And if within 10 days the cops are sure enough to say that they're, you know, they're, they're positive enough that she didn't leave there uh, or that she wasn't abducted, you know, Right. And it doesn't leave very many options for for who's to blame potentially. True, true. So they what did they do? They pinged Justin's phone. Um, they found out that he went to Portland that night or early that morning. I don't know if there was any follow up after that. If they were watching any of the DePetros from that point on, I don't know. You'd have to believe they did. I mean, if they didn't, they're definitely not doing their job. True, true. Justin left the area. Um, he moved to California. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, that I, that always bothered me. If if I was a father of a missing child, I would do anything I could or everything I could to uh, help find them. I certainly wouldn't fly across the country, furthest place away from Maine. Uh, no. What what is his link to California? Does he have family there, or uh, is he's that got an, just a? He's got an uncle out there, I believe. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah. Is that Michael? I don't remember. You don't know his name. Okay. Um, his mother and his, his aunt Selena was stationed at 29 Palms, and Phoebe lived there for a few years or a few months with her until she was restationed, and then Phoebe came back to Maine. But that's the only other connection I know that he had there, which is not very much. So Justin disappears. Um, Trista files for, she wanted to file for a wrongful death, but in order to file for wrongful death, she had to have a judge declare Ayla dead. Um, And the judge did that. I think it was September of 2017. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the wrongful death lawsuit was filed on December 2018. So I guess we all just wait and find out what's going to happen. I, kn- I know the attorney has deposed uh, several witnesses so far, or people, and he has others to talk to, and Justin DiPietro is one of them on his list. I think yeah, uh, and, and with, with something like that too, right, is if they pull anything out of this, because it could potentially be for a lot of money, uh, if, mm-hmm. but if they do pull anything out of this, I'm pretty sure it's like, uh, well, th- that can be used for a criminal case as well. So this could potentially lead to some answers or more answers than, than what we have now. I hope so. I hope so for the family that cares for her, for all the people that have come to know of her story. I uh, hope there are answers that come out. I think that's the, um, the goal is to kind of shake the tree and get people under oath to say what happened. Maybe, you know, his sister or ex-girlfriend will say something. That would be nice. I also talk about the lie detector test that he took. That he smoked? That he, that he claims he smoked it. Right. But he won't tell us how he did. And he's claiming that the police department won't tell him how he did. But yet they're saying they did tell him how he did. Mm-hmm. Which tells me he failed the damn thing. Well, that's the thing The thing about lie detector tests as well, right? Is they're inadmissible in court. Right. I, I'm not even sure why they're still used if you can't use them in court. Maybe it's something you could use in the civil suit. Oh, um, that's a good point. But mm. I'm not sure... <clears throat> Like why they would even pursue doing a lie detector. I think um, for an investigation, if you're interviewing multiple people, say you give lie detector tests to three people, one person severely fails it, the other two oh, pass. Right. You kind yeah. of point maybe, in the direction. Maybe, of, yeah, we'll talk to this guy a little bit more, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the only other thing is uh, the Pedro hasn't, like, he's been... He says he hasn't been hiding from the media, but he also has only done one interview since, when was it, like four years ago or something like that? Or five? Yeah, yeah. He has, he's only done three in total, I believe. Right, yeah. He's He doesn't want to talk to anyone. But at the same time, uh, there was one video that I saw where um, Trista was kind of chasing him down outside of a courthouse, mm-hmm. screaming at him. Yes, she um, was. I don't think I would be too interested in talking to anyone if that was kind of the reaction they get. Like, and I don't know, it all does seem pretty fishy, but I, I personally don't have too much of a, a real opinion on on who is at fault for any of this. It seems like you don't have a real. Really, you you really don't happened. have an opinion on on who may have hurt Ayla. It seems pretty fishy, but uh, I'm not. I can't. I can't say too much on it, honestly. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of questions on on both sides. There really I is. Feel- I mean, the easy way out is say, "Oh, Justin did it. It was it was his fault." But then when you right. start tying her being in the same area that morning, you know, was it a thing where he felt trapped, so he had to report her missing, or was it? In, in some of the body language and, and other things, uh, like there was one video um, of Trista, and it, it just uh, was she was talking about her daughter the the title of the video was something along the lines of uh her daughter is going to be a star or that's not how she wanted her daughter to be a star exactly yes i remember that yeah and and just the way that, the way that she talked during it, she discussed she mentioned that uh you know she could tell her deepest and darkest secrets to her daughter because you know she she wasn't going to tell anyone and that wasn't the the really weird part the the weird part was when she said, you know, when I had when I had her, I knew that she was going to be mine and only mine. And, you know, I would never, <clears throat> like, you know, I, I don't have to let her around anyone I don't want to. Something along those lines that just kind of seemed, uh, mm-hmm. A, either bad kind of, like, maybe she has really bad feelings, hard feelings with Justin. Or either way, it seems kind of bad, bad parenting, in my opinion, to not, right. you know, let them around uh, the father figure. If that's not what she was talking about, I'm not sure, but. It, yeah, now that now that you mention it, that seems almost creepy. To yeah, me. It, and it's just it's just stuff like that. There's there's mm-hmm. a lot of little weird things, even body language between the two of them when they are interacting, like yelling back and forth. Like <clears throat> there, there's a lot of 
some weird stuff going on between the two of them. Yep. Yep. And, but if I remember right, she also said she was acting that way to try to get really close to him because the police had a wire on her. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it was the balloon vigil, I believe. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. So do we know why or what pointed them to the direction of the water? Because I feel like they spent a lot of time searching the river and different ponds. Um, I, I don't really know why other than that's the first thing that a child would wander to is water. But it was still quite a distance away from the DiPietro's house. It was over a block down to the river, right? Down to the Mesolonsky. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and you got to go so, through a trail to get down in there too. Right. Um, unless she actually knew her way down there. Unless they thought someone else had brought her down there. I don't well, know. Th- there was still a, a small stream, judging from where you lived, Travis. It was. It wasn't too far, right? Where the uh, there was a little there was a little bridge there. Yeah. That's, was that that's not was that, was that, stream? Oh, is it okay? Was yeah. that actually deep enough for a child to like float down? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. was it okay? I don't know what led them to look there other than it was a body of water and they wanted to make sure that she hadn't wandered off and got to any bodies of water and that's why they chose to search them because they couldn't find anything of her anyplace else. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah, reported. I think if we could wander off, they'd, they'd stick to roads and not necessarily go towards streams, in my opinion. But I could be wrong. Mm. She had to go through roads to get to a stream if she if she, if that would have happened. Right. And now the only reason I think why, uh, yeah, the the Hathaway down behind the Hathaway mm-hmm. or the the two cent bridge wasn't Justin seen at the Bob Inn around one thirty in the morning that of the seventeenth and he had a blanket in the back seat and someone said they saw the the blanket in his back seat. And I never read that. Yep, yep. He was at the bobbin. I don't know if you guys even know where the bobbin is, but oh, yeah. I don't even. I've, I've, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're not, well, it's, we're not it's, proud it's, about it's, that, but <laughs> I've been there once. It's Temple Street. It used to be. I don't even think it exists anymore. But well, it was. It, it's right beside the police department too, though. Yes, it, right. It's right beside the police department and right across the street from the Two Cent Bridge. The Two mm-hmm. Cent Bridge is just below. Excuse me. It's just above the dam behind the Hathaway where right. they searched. So I don't know what led them there other than there was that report of him being seen well, that at the bobbin. In hopes what? that she got caught up in the dam somehow too because all the water yeah, passes the, through there. Yeah, but the mess. Oh, I might have this wrong. The Mesolonsky, um up off from Cool Street does not drain down to that section. Nope. That would be going up. Right. It, yeah. It, it's further mm-hmm. down the river. Mm-hmm. So, when we first started our page, um, I did have someone that reached out to us that stated that at the time, the bridge over the Meslonsky stream on 95 was being worked on. And remember, they diverted the northbound lane over to the southbound lane, and then you went back the northbound yes. lane after the, after the yes, bridge. Yes, I do. Right. So, he stated that the closed section of the northbound lane, there was a car had was parked in there with a trunk open, which is right over the, the river um, the night before. Okay. Which I always felt like that's a bizarre place oh. for someone to be parked with a trunk open. Now, I know right. they searched the river. I'm just not sure how far up the river they did search. Right. I know they searched um, not, you know, where the Quarry Hill Road is, where it starts? Mm-hmm. Right across the street there, there's like a like a path now, a tarred path, They yep. where you put the canoes in and all. I believe they searched in that area, just below the trestle. Mm-hmm. But Which would make sense didn't. if, I mean, because that's right. the direction of the water. So they would, if someone dropped something off there. Right. And they found a couple, they found two book bags. Um, absolutely nothing in relation to Ayla though. <sighs> so I myself was actually down in the woods in that area because um, I'm crazy. So I was looking for Ayla as well. Um, and I came across <laughs> a laptop bag. Yes, oh. Jeff, I'm crazy. I was going to say you care. There's a uh, difference. I came across this big red bag as I guess it was for a laptop or something but I, I started trying to open it up and there's this white gooey stuff in there and I'm thinking oh my god do I call PD do I keep sticking around to try to see if I can figure out what's actually in here mm-hmm. end up being a uh, a binder or a, a book from Colby College apparently a Colby College student um, but it's just swollen up with the rain and water or whatever 
Oh. Uh, so then I Google it, and apparently some homeless guy had been living down the woods there and was stealing people's things from Colby College and <laughs> got caught. But i got to tell you, there's about 10 minutes there. I was a little nervous that I was screwing up an investigation. Right. Oh, geez, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. I've been out searching, too, in places I probably should never have gone, but oh, you just feel compelled. I felt compelled every time I came home to Maine to visit with my family. I felt compelled to go out searching, and that's what I did. I walked the, the riverways. I searched cemeteries. I searched people's backyards where I should had no business being. Um, thankfully, I didn't get caught. But, yeah, we all do those things when we care because we cared. In Ayla's case, the whole reason why I'm doing this, like, she's the, she's been the spark plug for me as far as getting into missing people and helping uh, try to give voices for some of these people and bring these stories back out to the public side. So in that sense, her her life has meaning, obviously. Yeah. She touched a lot of people. She did, and she still is. She still has all of us who care. We're all going to be here for a very long time. And we hope we get answers soon. Yeah, something, something. Jeez, something. It's already been what eight years? Eight. Yes, over eight years now. Holy yeah. cow! It doesn't. It honestly seems like it was only a couple of years ago. Yeah. It does feel like that, especially when when all you see is just the pictures of her, yes, twenty months old. You know. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what people still want to to see her as. Right. That's heartbreaking. And she'd be what? Just about 10 now or whatever. She cool. would be 9 and she would be 10 on April 4th. Yeah. I think yeah. what was hard for me, and Donna, I know you've been to my home before, so you know where I, how close I live to Jeff. Right. Um, you guys know how close I live to the DePetro home. Yeah. But to drive by and see Alicia out there with her daughter, I just I don't know how they can still live there and, and go about their day. I don't either. They've made changes to their home. They have a patio that they've built on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. I believe their door has either been changed out or in any case it's a different, it looks like a different door. It's blue now, their front door. I mean, they've like, they've moved on. Their green shed that they had in the backyard is no longer there. There's a fire pit that's there. They've made changes. They've moved on and almost like they had nothing to do with anything. And that's very hard. It's very hard to see that yeah. for me. Yeah. I actually uh, stopped by there one day while Phoebe was mowing her front lawn. And I kind of told her what I do and asked her if she'd be willing to talk to me. And she said, without without turning her mower off, she said, now's not a good time. I'm like, well, oh. when is a good time? Now's not a good time. So I said, can I reach out to you on Facebook? I don't have Facebook. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah. she, she wasn't very forthcoming with me. No, and that's the other thing. People who are missing children and they aren't forthcoming, then they obviously have something to hide. Yeah, like what? I don't know why someone would be on the defensive about someone trying to, to help, help you. the story out. Right. right. There's, um, it's, it's like the police have always said, they know that they're not telling the whole story of what happened to Ayla. And yeah. everyone knows that, but there's nothing there's nothing yet to prove what has happened to Ayla. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for this civil case and see if they can drum something up and force them to talk. Well, let's see. That was filed on um, the 8th. Uh, yeah, the 18th of... No, no. It was filed on twenty in 2018, right? So that should be coming up pretty soon. Yeah, this summer. Oh, good. Very good. Very good. Maybe we'll find some answers then. Well, Donna, we really appreciate your time, and we applaud you for your effort. And, and yes, very much. Thank you. Keeping Thank her you. name out there. Um, now, can you? Thank you for doing this, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us the name of your Facebook page too? Is that a public site? My Facebook page is Speak Up for Ayla. Um, I believe it is open right now. I close it occasionally when I feel like um, something shouldn't be, uh, when I need to review something, I should say. Um, but most of the time it's open, so anyone can ask to join. And I generally will okay anyone. Awesome. Yep. 
I think it's important to get the uh, conversation out there and get people thinking. You know, and sometimes they might not even realize they know something until they hear something somebody else says and like, oh yeah, I remember this or whatever. Well, what I'm hoping is that somebody will will say, they'll listen to this podcast and they'll say, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I know exactly what happened. Maybe I need to tell people what really happened. You well, know? That's that, what I'm that's, hoping. That's welcome. That's yes, absolutely. That's that's what I hope will happen. So, okay, guys, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, well, thank you, Donna. you very much. Okay, very, very good night. Much. Have Bye. a good night. Bye. Bye. We'd like to thank Donna for taking the time to speak with us today, and to all the people keeping Ayla's memory alive. Remember to check out Donna's Speak Up for Ayla Facebook page. If you have more information about tonight's case, contact the Maine State Police at 1-800-452-4664. Or reach out to us on our Facebook page at Locating the Lost. You can also leave us a voice message on Anchor FM. The link can also be found on our Facebook page. Thanks for listening. Five-year-old Taylor, Taylor Williams led investigators to Alabama this week. So we have some breaking news from Florida. An arrest has been made. Tonight, in connection after with years of agony, a glimmer of hope for the family. Investigators spent hours searching through this house off Pennsylvania Avenue. What could be a major development in the search for missing Alabama teenager. Tonight, a stunning twist in the search for Taylor. Cases, somebody out there knows something. They want to lay him to rest their way, not by somebody else's way.